And welcome back to Sports Talk, our special edition of the LL Football Coaches Show, an annual tradition here on Blue Ridge 11. I'm Chad Landers. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're enjoying this so far. We are staying in Section 3, and we're moving out to New Holland as we bring in Garden Spots head coach, Matt Zamperini. How are you, coach? Thanks for coming on here. How are you feeling about the season getting started soon? We feel good. Um, you know, we've, we've been at it. It's time to go. You know, we've been at it with enough of the song and dance. It's time to get the pads on and start hitting. So we're ready. We're ready. Yeah, spoken like a true football coach. Let's give everybody a look at home as a refresher. Who's in Section 3 this year? This is where Garden Spot is. And, and as Burks merges in with the LL League, this is the teams you will be facing this year. And we're kind of thinking this thing is wide open. We would love to get your thoughts, Coach Z, as you take a look at all the teams that are in here. And we'll toss it over to you. How do you feel Garden Spot's chances are in Section 3 this year? What do you like about being in Section 3 with these teams this year? I think it's a good schedule for all, for all those groups. I think we'll be be competitive with everyone. It's, it's going to be it's, – it's hard to tell. You know, it, it really is uh, just how, the, how, how teams' rosters finally shaped up versus – you know, the roster that you had thought you were getting all summer and did you gain a few kids? Did you lose a few kids? And are you staying healthy? You know, I know there's, there's, uh, we've played, you know, in the last five years, pretty much every team on that schedule, either in the old section play or some of the Burks crossover that we've had last two seasons. So we're familiar with all those guys and they're all, they're all strong programs. They're well coached. Uh, and you know, they're, they're, their brand of football is getting better. You know, Twin Valleys is much, much, much better than they, than you know, the, when I was playing them a few years ago. So, it's 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 hard to say at this point, but I know they're good programs, and they're all looking for the same thing we are. All right. So, an interesting thing about the way 2021 went for you, you guys started off a bit slow, but finished red hot. Was there something that you guys did at the end of that season that was working for you, and how does that? able to like carry over to this year to get off to a hot start well the biggest thing it was just it was it was getting our personnel right and the biggest thing was that quarterback you know Kai came Kai Harding came in as a sophomore and went five and one and his only loss was to LS and and you know, we gave them a good game for three, you know the better part of three quarters so he was there was a few other pieces to that but he was he was the biggest one he He's uh, he's a deceptively quick kid running the ball. He runs our offense well. He, he he throws the ball. He understands defenses. And you know, for that that was the big difference was was our Kai at at, at at making the position change at quarterback. Okay, and so he sticks at quarterback now for you. What does he do well? What are his skill sets that kind of fit into your guys' offensive scheme? Well, I think in six games, he was pretty much even. He, I think he was 600 yards rushing and eight or 900 yards passing in six games. So he, he allows us to be extremely balanced in what we like to do. It's important for us to keep the quarterback as a running threat. It just makes, makes an offense that much harder to defend. You defend 11 instead of 10. And he's one of those guys that gives us a legit running threat, but he is, but he, he can stand in and, and spin the ball too. So, you know, he's a, he's a definitely a dual threat kid that, you know, and, and I think we'll end up being one of the better ones that we've had. And we've had a bunch of them. Yeah. That's saying a lot. Cause I could think back to some that you've had, like, you know, the Mitch Martins and uh, Cam Roths of the world. So yeah. that is pretty high praise. Yeah. He's going to be right there. Okay. All right, that seems like you're excited for that but obviously needs other weapons to kind of get it to. Now, it feels like some of those guys have moved on. Who can the fan base look forward to as names that are going to be really making an impact for you guys this season? Well, offensively, uh, we actually have, you know, we have, we have more, some more sure-handed athletes. We have four or five guys we can throw the ball to, which we like. And you know, the Saturday scrimmage, we, we threw the ball well, and, uh, you know, I think we had one drop pass with the Alphas to the first group. So, number one guy there is going to be uh, Zach Nagel. He, he's coming off of a, a very good junior year, and, you know, he's bigger and stronger and a little bit faster, sure-handed. He, he loves the screen game, but he can stretch people vertically as well. Uh, Diego Portales, Nick Gleason, um, 
um, Blake Weaver, and you know, uh, Nick Schmucker. There's 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 a group of guys there that have put a lot of work in the off season and and you know, are able to get open and catch the football. So we're going to be able to spread it around a little bit. But I think Nagel will be at the top of that list as far as you know. If I'm watching film, you know, he 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 he's he's the one that I would be worried about mo covering the most. Offensive line. I know you guys like to get hands on there with those guys. How is that for you? Is it breaking in a new group? Is it going well? What are your thoughts there? Is that going to also help the offense either make or break it this year? Yeah, absolutely. We have three three quality starters back, uh, led by uh, Tyler Hurst and Colin Whitmer. Um, and an in, interesting side note is uh, Gabe Smeltz, who's a returning offensive tackle, was at went to boot left for uh, Army boot camp early sign in uh, he left in June, and we're actually not he's getting back Friday night at midnight, so we're not going to have him game one, but we'll have him game two. So I'm pretty sure he'll be in shape at the time, you know, <laughs> finishing <laughs> up a uh, boot camp in Georgia. But uh, he's he'll he'll figure back into the mix once he gets a little bit of the rust off. And uh, so we, we have we have four guys who I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to find a quiet place. My wife's dog likes to bark. We're getting the tour of your whole house right now. <laughs> so yeah, so I, you know. We'll be solid. We have two sophomores that we like that we that mixed in pretty well with uh, Slank. So we had had some size up front, was physical, and they have they they carry their own as sophomores. So we'll be able to mix some of those guys in too. And you know the key there is you know trying to not trying to get some depth between your offensive line and your defensive line. So sure. you know we we don't have tremendous depth there, but I think we have enough that we'll, we'll be solid. And, How and, Saturday, yeah, Saturday, you know, we, 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 we moved the ball well running the football. And uh, we, we were physical up front, and some of those young guys did well. And Percy and Colin Whitmer and, and Reed Gruber and those guys, you know, they were they were they picked up right where they left off. Who would you face on Saturday? We played Elko. Okay. All right. So that's a Section 4 team. You guys are Section 3, but pretty evenly matched there. How yeah. about – yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. They, you know, it was it was a good scrimmage. You know, it was uh, they were physical pound the ball teams. We found out, found out, or you know, who who we who's gonna play behind their pads a little bit, and and some young guys got to get in that mix as well. So it was a good scrimmage. Good, yeah. And it sounds like a lot of people have had some really great tune-up scrimmages. Everyone's ready to go. And I think back to kind of your first in at Garden Spot, defense was a big thing with you. And I know you're trying to kind of bring that back here at Garden Spot this second time around. How's the defense going? Is it getting to where you like it? We, yeah, we've made a few. It, it's it, the hard, it's, it, it is very difficult at the high school level to find the right formula personnel-wise. You know, it, it's hard. It's challenging. And the, the, the one for me – you know, I haven't coached too long in the one scrimmage uh, affair. And that's the biggest thing for me was two scrimmages shirt up who you need to be where and and giving them ample time to train. So that's a challenge is, is getting the, the right kids at the right positions and, and training them for the different things that they see each week. So I think, you know, we you know, there were times over the past couple of years where we were uh, kind of surviving at certain positions. You know, we have a little bit more flexibility this year and we're trying to optimize personnel and then trying to mesh offense with defense as well so that your kids are get, have some tank and gas in the tank in the fourth quarter. All right, well, you'll be worrying about fourth quarters here rather shortly as week one kicks off on Friday. You guys have Conrad Weiser. Uh, how are you feeling about that? Is there anything that uh, you match up with them or they match up with you that, that you're interested in talking about? Well, it's, it's difficult, again, to tell. I mean, you have one scrimmage. And probably, you know, I would say 30, 25 to 30 offensive reps to to try to break down. You know, it's not a lot of data points. Usually for a game, you have three scrimmages times – or three games times 70 plays. You know, you usually have a couple hundred data points. So we have about, you know, 10 or 15% of that that we're trying to build a game plan around. So <laughs> game one is a challenge. But – uh you know they're 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 big up front. They're replacing a, uh, their great quarterback that they had. So they're you know they're looking they're looking to find that kid as well. And 
at the scrimmage, they were under center a bit, trying to pound the ball, then they were spread out a bit. I think, you know, they're trying to figure out where their skill sets are best suited as well. So we kind of got to be ready to, uh, for a little bit of everything for them Friday night, I believe. Yeah, Friday night, week one, and then it's off to the races as uh, you will start to get into that Section 3 schedule at some point. We're excited for you guys. I know you guys are itching to get out there as well and, and get those games that uh, are going to matter on the record underway. Thanks so much for coming on here with us, Coach. We uh, look forward to seeing you later in the season on Blue Ridge 11, and uh, good luck in week one. Thank you. Thank you. Apologize for missing 7 o'clock time. <laughs> it's all good. We appreciate it. Always love having you on. Oh, I didn't get to ask you one last thought. Is there some sort of mindset that you're going to give the guys? You always have a great quote or two that you're throwing around. Is there one that you're hammering away at here this season? Men of violence on the field, gentlemen off the field. Is that what it is? Yes. You always give us one, and I feel like it needs to be up on the wall, but that's an interesting one. Give it to us again. Men of violence on the field, gentlemen off the field. Okay. And how do you feel like you're doing with that? We, like, we, we got we to gotta teach our kids to be physical. And we have a few kids that just really come natural to that. Guys like Tyler Hurst, constant motor. Um, and getting other kids to follow his suit. We have, some, we have a handful of just natural leaders in that area. Colin Whitmer's another one, Reed Gruber's another one, just kids that kids that love the physical aspect of football and just just training them to bring that brand of football on the field. If you're if you you know if if you're if you can and a you know a big part of that is what you've done in the offseason. It's hard to match fit match up physically if you don't match up size size and strength. And we've done that. We've put our time in the weight room and and, uh, you know, those, that's the brand of football that, that that's the product that we want to have on Friday night. We want to know, we want to, we want to be able to gauge, did we out hit our team, our opponent on Friday night? Because we feel that, you know, if we're, if we're out hitting them, then we have a good chance to beat them. Well, that sounds like Spartan football as I know it coming from you. Thanks so much for coming on again, coach. And we will see you later this season. All right. Thank you. All right, have a great night. And that is head coach of the Garden Spot Spartans, Coach Zamperini. And we are moving along as we switch over to Section 4, and we'll be bringing the Cacalico Eagles onto the program next. Stay tuned for that, as we'll be right back here on Sports Talk. <laughs> 